Hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. How's everybody doing? Hope we're all having a great day wherever you are, whatever you may be doing. This is 50 Pips rocking and rolling here, 13th of uh, May 2018. No trade calls, no recommendations, or response for their own stuff. We're here for educational purpose only. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Well, basically, as we're going into this week, uh, there's a couple of interesting things. I mean, on the equity side here, basically, bulls are control. I think at this stage of the game, the way we're looking at this is, right, we said once the ES breaks above the 2700 and holds from a closing basis, that also means it closes above that 100 DMA, there's very little to hold it back all the way back up into the 2800s. So here, as long as this break sticks, you'd have to expect this to continue to grind higher. Now, we'll have to see how that happens. Uh, as we get towards the back end of the month when we got you know a QT coming back into into play but here what you would be looking at is any dip into the 2700 for the mark for the bulls to buy this up to continue this move higher now what's interesting in this particular dynamics is that here the bulls are really in control because there's two things that can happen right remember we're kind of like stuck inside this um, this triangle. Now, essentially what happens is this could come back into the 2700 and get bought for the move back higher, or this could easily come all the way back down closer to that 200 and the bottom and still hold for that break higher, right? So clearly here the bulls are in control and it's uh, it's looking much nicer for the bulls than for the bears. We'll have to see how this stands. The only way the bears really get any kind of traction or get back in control of the situation is if we get a day close below this 200 DMA and ideally a day close below the 2600. Then it could get very, very interesting. and We'd expect to see that shift all the way back to the 2450s. But right now the bulls are in control. So we'll have to see what's going on this week. The only thing I'd say is a little bit of word of caution again anything can happen but here we've had one two three four five six seven positive days in a row so i think here whether you're a bull or a bear you understand that the healthy move is to see some kind of sideways action to pull back and technically the the you know the place to look at it, it would be a pullback into this 100 the 700 then the bulls would want this to hold for that rotation higher the bears would want to see it close below the 2700 so they get a stab at, at getting back below the 50 and then opens up that 200. So that's pretty much where we are. It's a fairly similar situation across the board. So nothing too exciting going on. I mean, well, so nothing too complex, right? It seems, I think, fairly clear. And most market participants are going to be looking at it this way. For us, the most interesting development here is on the currency side. And we've been talking about the fact that the... Uh, DXY was starting to stall, to stall, right? You see all these wicks to the upside, really unable to get traction. And once it started to roll, we said here, you know, what that indicates is um, basically the way we look at it is, right, when you see the market trying to stall like that, then we'd want to revert to the specific different majors or the, you know, currency pairs and see where do we have the nicest um, location, nicest asymmetric risk reward to try and fade this potential dollar weakness, right, moving back. And now what happened is exactly what you'd be looking for if you were expecting to see a little bit pullback of this dollar index is you wanted the uh, the weekly to close negative and, right, close negative back below the 50 uh, week uh, moving average. So this is quite interesting. I mean, uh, we'll talk about this tomorrow in the weekly session in detail, what this means for the broader cycle in terms of the DXY. It's a fairly interesting discussion here. So, but suffice to say here, I think similar to the ES, most people would be looking for the healthy move here to be a little bit of a pullback into uh, on this DXY. And again, if you're looking at this on the daily, the most natural place for it to pull back to is this 200 DMA this previous resistance, which now should be acting as support. You'll see these moving averages roll up. And as long as this area holds, then this move is still in play. If that doesn't, then we're back on the bearish roll. Now, what are the most interesting charts in terms of uh, specific currency pairs? We, we looked at two, right, more specifically. One was uh, USD CHF. 
the fact that we'd really had a very, very aggressive move. Like, again, I don't want to talk about the reasons, but essentially here, if you look at it, this was really uh, a very, very aggressive squeeze all the way back into this previous uh, resistance zone. We've had some very nice moves down there, back into that uh, top end of that standard deviation channel, those standard deviation channels. And we said, if anything, this is most likely one of the nicest asymmetric risk rewards and we'd expect to see any failure to hold above this uh, you know essentially uh 1030s or 40s to uh to sign that it's time to get a little bit of a pullback so again this was a very nice asymmetric risk reward here we'll have to see how this trades i think any any close early on in the week and again the range is being super tight but any uh, close on the week back below the 9950 and I think that opens up a much nicer move all the way back to the bottom end of the channel and back to the confluence of these moving averages. But here in terms of asymmetry, the, you know, the move is very, very interesting here. You know, you've got this much risk to the upside, even as we're trading here. And, you know, you've got fairly decent move to the downside. And the other one, which was even more interesting, the way it started to shape up on the week was basically yen, right? Uh, regardless of the fact that, you know, if you look at yen from a bigger picture on this, um, let me just clear the moving averages up, on the weekly here, we came back into this area. Now, a lot of people were saying this was going to break up, and what we said is it's too early. You know, we can't go for the breakup yet because as far as we're concerned, we broke down and we're still holding below the 109.50s. And if we get a day, if, if we manage to get a day or a weekly close above 109.50s, our base case would have been that we were going to see a sharp, aggressive squeeze back to the 112s, and then it was game on. You'd probably see some interesting opportunities there. But unless you got that day or week close back above the 109, this was still an interesting place, an interesting place to look for asymmetry for the move all the way back into the 100 to play out. And if you translate that over to the daily, you see, again, the confluence is very nice as um, putting this 200. You see how as that DXY was uh, was struggling a little bit here, you've got that 200 being uh, being defended. Right. So here you've got these negative closes here, the 200 being defended. So, again, this is another classic case that as soon as we close back below the 10950 again, in terms of asymmetry, right? This is your risk even on a day close above the 200 for even on a minor pullback to the 50 back of this move. You've got very nice risk reward, but you know, if you got that move all the way back to the 100, then it's, let me just scale back to make it a little bit more interesting. You know, you see what we're talking about. This is exactly what we like to look at in terms of risk reward. So we'll have to see what happens there. We think those are the most interesting charts and everything is going to be a little bit of a function of that, especially as we've been discussing in detail on gold and 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 so on. So those are really the most interesting thing. That's really the most interesting di di development going into this week. And and again, that will translate into euro, into into a lot of the other pairs. Maybe uh, one last chart to look at because I got a bunch of emails on this is uh crude again crude here is uh you know a lot of people are saying oh when is the unwind coming when is the unwind coming and you know we were looking for this to unwind earlier on but once we start to get this uh, heightened geopolitical risk there's just no edge right and then the question you get most of all is well how do i know when this is going to unwind well listen if this is going to unwind hard because of the positioning because of you know lack of follow-through on the geopolitical risk whatever the unwind we're talking about you know potentially something like a 10 to 15 buck unwind so it, the, the, in this case it'll be fairly clear and there'll be so many longs to unwind there'll be plenty of opportunities to get back into the trade so again i really wouldn't want be one of those guys who's thinking oh i need to have one foot in the water just to have some kind of short exposure just in case it rolls without me because chances are if it rolls you'll get a chance to get in and uh you know best case worst case you want to have a foot in the uh, in the water you'll have that foot in the water but this is going to be trading in the 80s right so again if you're trading if you're not trading uh whatever uh C cfds or something like that if you're if you're trading you know serious uh if you're trading the futures it, you know i don't have to spell it out for you you know uh, struggling to stay 
with one foot short since mid 60s and this trades in the in the 80s it's it's not pretty right so it's clearly not something we want to do so short term here what we'd be focusing on again is the 70 mark right if we get a failure to hold below that 70 mark from an intraday perspective or a day close then we could easily see a nice little pullback into the 66 67s but right now and again you know you'll have those moving averages that are coming back into the trend so really that's the first pivotal level the second pivotal level is going to be the 62 60s but really the way we're looking at this unless we get you know a little bit of a resolve on on this whole geopolitical tensions and everything it just seems like you're always one headline away from a little pop one headline away about somebody lobbing a missile here or there um, so really it just seems that everybody's pressing for for this to continue to grind higher towards the 75 and the 80s i think it's a foregone conclusion that sooner or later everybody's going to get so hyped you'll get a big puke but the problem is we just don't feel there's an awful lot of edge being stubborn trying to wait for that big puke there are far more interesting charts out there there's far uh, more interesting asymmetry uh, maybe another one that we don't look at often and I think is interesting is um, is a silver chart and um, so let's get back on silver and right here and we've been looking at this for a long time uh, again no no position but I keep an eye on here on this right because you see how we've been trying to base for an awfully long time and it keeps on you know they've been playing whack-a-mole here you know smacking it down into this cluster of the two on uh, of all these moving averages I think here if we can get a decent close above the 200 or if we can rip higher and then we come back and we hold some kind of support all of a sudden this is flipping right you've got this whole cluster of moving averages that's going to be support rather than resistance and then we this could open up that much bigger move on silver so this is one of the charts i definitely have on uh, on the radar for this week okay hope that was useful to everybody have an awesome one wishing everybody a great week uh, let's see what we get uh, have an awesome one thank you for listening thank you for sharing thank you for liking and again see you guys around on twitter have an awesome one bye bye